Today, let me show you how you can resolve probably the biggest problem with those little things. The battery-operated model finder boozers. Have you also noticed that they don't survive very long? And after some time of being not in use, they just die? And then of course you have to buy the new one because they are after all extremely useful devices. And it's not that they are super expensive, but well, they should not be dying that often. Luckily, I have a good news. They are are usually quite simple to fix. And more than that, sometimes you even do not have to buy the new battery. They just seem to have some kind of the design flaw, but one simple trick can fix them. By the way, this video was created thanks to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. Thank you guys so much. If you are not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. Thanks. It means a lot and it helps me to make more videos for you. And by the way, hit the like button and write something in the comments, because why not? After all, you are still here, right? The real problem with those buzzers is that they have zero to none battery management, period. Yes, they do have a charger, but I don't think that this is a very well-designed charger. That, if you combine this with the fact that each of those batteries has the battery protection circuit, can lead to a problem. The first battery problem is that, well, the battery died. It happens especially when you are not using and you're not charging those buzzers from time to time, then the battery just swells up and looks like this. You see how swollen the battery is? At this moment the battery is gone, you cannot fix it. If the battery is dead, you just have to replace it. Find the online store, find the battery with the same size or similar size. They all will be 1S. For example, this is 20 by 10 by 5 millimeters. But because I was not able to find exactly this size, on this buzzer I replaced this with 20 by 10 by 3 millimeters. And you know what? Works perfectly. Shorten the cables, remove the old battery, solder the new battery in place and you are done. The buzzer should be fixed, usually. Not always. However, if the voltage on the new battery or all the old battery, it doesn't really matter, is below the threshold, it seems like the charger on those things have a design flow. They are unable to bump the voltage high enough, so the battery protection circuit is built into each of those battery puts the voltage back and allows the battery to be recharged. This is exactly what happened on this buzzer. When I replaced the battery, the battery was still not charging and I thought that the electronics is dead. However, I found out that it's not really the case. If the battery is not swollen up, but still the buzzer is not working and even if you are trying to charge it, it's not holding the charge at all, it might be because the battery protection circuit just cut off the charging circuit and the charger on the buzzer is not generating high voltage enough to get through. How to verify that? Take the multimeter, open, set it into the voltage measurement mode and just check what's the voltage on the connectors of the battery. Even when the module is connected. Like for example here I have 3.9 volts that means the battery is mostly charged no problem. If however you read 0 volts or something below 3 volts there is just a pretty good chance that the battery protection circuit just turn off charging possibility because the input voltage is too low and this charger has a problem that just outputs too low of the voltage. Now you will have to restart the battery to do a force charging. How to do it? Pretty simple. You will only need a voltage source. Nicely stabilized voltage source. I will be using Toolkit RC P200 workbench power source, but you can use basically anything. You only have to be capable of precisely setting the voltage. Worst case scenario, if you do not have workbench power supply, you can just use 1S LiPo that is in the storage mode. First thing, 
we have to set the correct voltage of the power supply. Use something around 3.1, 3.3 volts, with of course the lowest possible current level. It should not explode, but you know, let's keep things safe. Set the correct voltage one more time, 3.3 volts is enough. Take the power leads and just connect them directly to the battery connector over here. Minus to black, black to black, red to red and connect this for like 3-5 seconds, no more. This initial charge should get through the battery protection circuit built into the battery, put some juice into the battery and then the battery should work again. If you then try to charge it like you usually do, the battery should be active again and the buzzer should be saved. If you do not have the power supply, you can use other 1S battery in the storage mode. Yes, I know, you should never short circuit batteries. You should be extremely careful when handling LiPo batteries and never just try to charge one from the other. However, in this case, we should be safe. Why? Because both this battery and this battery has the battery protection circuit. That means that it will not allow too much of the current to flow in this circuit. Both batteries have a protection, so you should be fine. However, never, absolutely ever use the RC battery without the battery protection circuit like this one. This might end bad. If, however, you want to be on the safe side, use a 50 ohm resistor soldered in line between those two batteries. So somewhere here, 50 ohm resistor, doesn't matter if on the red or the black wire, and just connect black to black, red to red for a few seconds. This will be enough to unblock the battery protection circuit on this battery and everything should be fine. Still, probably the best way to avoid this kind of the problems with those buzzers is to keep them charged. You should most probably charge every single one of them once a month so that the battery just does not die. But if it dies, replace it or try to reanimate. But bear in mind, if it's already swollen up, nah, just buy a new one and replace. Here's the next video you should watch. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!